just waiting for my breakfast. Lois! Whether it's a bowl of oatmeal in the morning or a granola bar to keep you going during the day, Quaker Oats has always been there. So here are 10 things you should really know before eating Quaker Oats again. Have you never been to a Quaker fair before? The Quaker Oats man isn't real. What did you say? When gazing upon a box of Quaker Oats oatmeal, you can't help but feel a certain kinship with the Quaker Oats man on the box. Something about his kind eyes and wholesome look makes you trust him. It's easy to imagine Mr. Quaker Oats giving out hot oatmeal to cold children or otherwise just being a nice guy. If you've grown up on Quaker Oats, you may have wondered from time to time, who is this mysterious man? There's a long-standing belief that he's the founder of Pennsylvania, William Penn. It's possible, U.S. history says Penn became a Quaker when he was 22, but according to Quaker Oats lore, it's not him. Um, uh, okay. So what is the truth? Apparently, he's not even a real person. But just because he's not a real person doesn't mean that he doesn't have a name. According to several sources, company insiders call this mysterious man Larry, a name befitting such a kind face. Indeed. Indeed. Quaker Oats created packaging as we know it. Oh, such beautiful packaging. From the very beginning, Quaker Oats has been known for its recognizable packaging. The way that the company has marketed its products has been instrumental for its growth. Not only did they have to convince people to eat oats in the first place, but they also had to get them to prepare oats in a way that made people want to keep buying Quaker Oats products. Those challenges got the founders of Quaker Oats, specifically Henry Crowell, to thinking. He decided that packaging was very important, and so he started packaging their products in the round, colorful containers that we see today. People started to take notice and buy Quaker Oats. Very double noise. But what about making them? Well, Henry Crowell had the solution for that, too. Back then, printing a recipe on the box was absolutely unheard of. So when Quaker Oats started doing it, they had no idea how successful it was going to be. They started doing this in 1891, but their brilliant marketing techniques didn't stop there. In 1891, consumers could find a piece of China dishware in their oat boxes. And while well, that's quite a bit different from the toys we usually expect in today's cereal, they can take credit for this idea, too. Nice work. Good. Thanks, Dad. Quaker Oats is finally rebranding Aunt Jemima. Come on over here, sugar. Aunt Jemima. Growing up, you might remember making Aunt Jemima pancakes. This easy-to-make packaged pancake mix was a great way to start the day. Well, as of February, Quaker Oats, the brand's parent company, said that they would be changing the packaging for good. Why? Well, because the brand's name and logo are based on a racial stereotype. It isn't hard to see how the smiling Aunt Jemima logo was inspired by the Mammy stereotype. In fact, the first face of the pancake product was a former slave by the name of Nancy Green. Quaker Oats bought the Aunt Jemima brand in 1925 and has updated the logo over the years in an effort to remove negative stereotypes. Thankfully, after many protests, the brand has finally been able to see that no matter how many times the logo is updated, it still holds on to those harmful stereotypes. It makes sense, doesn't it? The pancake mix will make its official name change to Pearl Milling Company this year. <laughs> Good to know. Quaker Oats created the Willy Wonka brand. How's the chocolate factory, Willy Wonka? Gene Wilder's Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory is one of those classic childhood movies that probably gave everyone sweet dreams as well as nightmares. Whether you loved it or hated it, something about the magical chocolate factory and the mystical Willy Wonka enraptured a generation. But some Something you might not know about this childhood classic is that it was funded by Quaker Oats, mostly as a marketing tactic. All they had to do was finance the movie, and then a major film studio would release it. Shut up and take my money! They would make candy based on the one scene in the film, and they would make a huge profit. And that's exactly how it went down. Ever wonder why it's not Charlie and the Chocolate Factory like the book? It's because Quaker Oats wanted to make sure the name Willy Wonka was front and center. So they could profit off of it. The Willy Wonka line of candy was launched alongside the movie, but that wasn't without some difficulties. They couldn't come up with the perfect Wonka bar on time, and only peanut butter oompas and super scrunch bars were released at first. Wonka bars came a few years later, and Quaker Oats ended up selling that division to Nestle in 1988. Good luck with that. Was Quaker Oats selling horse food? What? what? 
Quaker Oats was trademarked all the way back in 1877. Over the course of the next two decades, it saw three competing oat milling companies come together to form a single conglomerate. It was only after years of infighting that Quaker Oats was officially formed in 1901. The fact that Quaker Oats was able to come together and rise up to become the influential company it is today is amazing, considering the entire industry was built on their founder's ability to convince the public they should be eating livestock feed. One of the co-founders of Quaker Oats is Ferdinand Schumacher, a man who immigrated to the United States from Germany in 1851. In Germany and most of Europe at the time, people were familiar with the idea of eating oats and porridge. You might be thinking, who doesn't eat oats and porridge? The answer is Americans, at least back then. People used oats to feed their horses, so they weren't very inclined to eat them themselves. I can't eat this. So Schumacher had to get creative. He decided to go for a different angle and began selling glass jars packed with cubed oats. This made them convenient to prepare and eat, which generated interest. Spurred on by this success, Schumacher found a way to cook the oats faster, which only helped to grow his company. He created rolled oats around the same time the Civil War was kicking off. The military needed a cheap way to feed a lot of people, and soldiers across the country were introduced to the idea that they could eat what their horses ate. Not bad. Not bad. Larry's gone through many makeovers. What about a top to bottom makeover for the entire department? While Larry, the Quaker Oats mascot, was first developed in 1877, he certainly hasn't stayed the same over the years. At first, Larry was pictured standing up. In 1956, the company decided to crop the rest of his body and focus on his friendly face, and we can't blame them. In 1957, they added color to the mix, bringing Larry closer to the logo we know today. Here's a fun fact. If the art style for Larry looks familiar, it's because he was drawn by the same artist who did the Santa Claus illustrations for Coca-Cola. I see what you did there. Good one. Considering how nice they both look, they're probably good friends. But in the 1970s, the company decided to give him a complete overhaul. They gave Quaker a new blue and white logo, which looks very 70s. Thankfully, that look didn't last long, and even though the company seemed to be having a bit of a font-related identity crisis, the classic Larry was back and fans rejoiced. In 2007, the company designed both the logo and box that most people are familiar with today. In 2010, then, Quaker Oats started redesigning both their packaging and the frame Larry was trapped in, wanting to make the most of their status as a healthy food. The most recent change has been to Larry's background. Where it was once red, it's now white. And Larry looks as sharp as ever. As we keep moving on, take a second to hit that like button, would ya? Thank you. Next! Radioactivity is more likely than you think. Not great, not terrible. In the 1940s and the 1950s, more than 100 youngsters living at the Fernald State School, a state-run school for abandoned boys, were invited to join the science club. There were plenty of reasons why a young boy would want to join. For one, they were given hearty breakfasts, starvation was a frequent punishment at the school, as well as trips to baseball games. What they didn't know, though, was that there was a catch. Quaker Oats had joined efforts with researchers from MIT for three experiments involving boys between the ages of 10 and 17. They were given breakfasts of Quaker oats, which happened to contain radioactive calcium and iron. Why? In case you were wondering, no, the boys didn't know that this was happening, and yes, that is a complete violation of civil rights. There were a few reasons for the experiment. First off, researchers wanted to know what kind of effects radioactivity had on the human body, since many people at the time were being exposed to it. Secondly, Quaker oats wanted in on the study because they they saw it as a way to prove their oatmeal was just as healthy as their competitors. They would get their medical testing done, MIT their results, it was a win-win. That was until a lawsuit in 1995 hit both parties. While the radioactivity thankfully hadn't caused any lasting damage, the boys were still entitled to a settlement and apology. The suit was settled for $1.85 million. Noise. Quaker Oats and Snapple, a bad mix. Chris, what the hell are you doing? 
Calm down. This is how they package Snapple now. When you think of Quaker Oats, you probably think about their oatmeal, maybe their granola bars, or even their cereal. But did you know that they've dabbled in other products as well? They've tried producing pet food, clothing, and even video games. They also bought the Snapple brand in 1994, which made them one of the largest beverage companies in North America, behind Coca-Cola and PepsiCo. Unfortunately, this partnership didn't last long. One source even went so far as to call it one of the worst flops in corporate merger history. Yikes. Quaker Oats only owned Snapple for 27 months, selling it for $300 million after making a $1.7 billion investment in the drink company. If you're doing the math, that is a huge loss for Quaker Oats. Think about it. So why did this acquisition fail? Well, we can't say for sure because there is an infinite number of factors that come into play in an acquisition like this, but some people blame the disastrous merger on the company's failure to understand Snapple's strengths, along with stiff competition from the other beverage distributors. Maybe Quaker Oats should stick to what they do best and leave the beverage market to the beverage companies. Just don't do it, promise? Is there weed killer in your breakfast? What? In 2018, the Environmental Working Group, the same group that releases the Dirty Dozen list, tested multiple breakfast foods to look for the presence of glyphosate. For those who don't know, glyphosate is found in weed killer, specifically in Roundup. The results were shocking. Not only did Quaker Oats test positive for the stuff, but so did breakfast foods like Cheerios and Lucky Charms. But they couldn't possibly include harmful materials in our breakfast foods, right? Wrong -o. 31 of the 45 samples of oats tested were deemed to be below their safety criteria. And when they went back and tested more samples, they found that all but two of 28 samples were deemed harmful. That's some scary stuff. That being said, we're not really sure how dangerous glyphosate actually is. The World Health Organization's International Program on Chemical Safety says it's not a concern at all. On the other hand, the WHO's International Agency for Research on Cancer says it's probably carcinogenic, so clearly more research needs to be done. A week before the results went public, a judge in California ruled in favor of a man who claimed repeated exposure to Roundup caused his terminal cancer. Quaker Oats did respond to the findings with this statement, saying that the levels of glyphosate in Quaker Oats products are below any regulatory limits and are safe for human consumption. Awesome! Quaker Oats partnered with the FDA. I thought I was already ready your partner. Whoa, cowboy. As you can see, oatmeal in North America has come a long way. It used to be seen only as horse food, and now it's the perfect breakfast food for a health-conscious family. This pristine image of oatmeal is largely attributed to some official FDA claims. Before 1997, foods weren't allowed to advertise claims about specific benefits. For example, while they could say that they're low-fat, they weren't allowed to say that they helped to manage cholesterol. Quaker Oats didn't like that, so they reached out to the FDA and requested permission to advertise the fact that including oats in a balanced, low-fat diet would help reduce the risk of heart disease. While there were protests from some groups claiming consumers would be misled into thinking certain foods were magic foods, the FDA allowed for it to happen. Good for them! The FDA did acknowledge these concerns, but they said that people wouldn't be misled. While we can not say whether or not people believed some foods were magic foods, we can say that this change in regulation helped Quaker Oats sales by quite a lot. Money, 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 money. Show us some love. Tap or click for more great videos, hit that subscribe button, and ring that bell to join our notification squad. And hey, leave us a comment.